Hello, welcome back. We're now going to focus our attention on Arsenal. So they beat Leeds tonight 1-0, even if the first half was a little bit shaky. They have made their way through that game. Uh, and now we get to discuss it and dissect it, really, and just figure out what Arteta's done so far, um, whether or not it's a step in the right direction with this club, and, and, and ultimately how you felt when he was appointed. So, Paul, being a former gunner, I should ask you really first about the appointment of Mikel Arteta. Was it one that you supported? Uh, no, it wasn't at the start, if I'm being honest. I thought for, for someone to come and who's never been a manager before to come into a massive club like Arsenal, I thought it would be a struggle. Mm. I, know, I know he's worked with Pep Guardiola, but what I've seen in the last few weeks, there's been a couple, at least two or three games where it's the only first times I've seen Arsenal for a long time and I haven't thought Arsene Wenger's been the manager. They tried to close at Chelsea and then they sort of faded second mm -hmm. half and got tired, which they are going to, if you're not used to doing that. And then the way they played against United, they sort of all knew their jobs against United. And then, and today, what I liked about him today is that he's gone in at half-time, they're getting... They were fortunate not to be two or three or four down. Mm -hmm. And he turned it around, he's got the players and they've come back and won the game quite convincingly in the end and they were outstanding. So, yeah, I, I mean, he's, he's, turning, he's turning me around a bit, but he will need players. The likes of Meza Erza when we talk about that Manchester United game, looked like the Meza Erza of old, mm, that player. Arsenal fans were so excited about watching well, a few seasons back. Well, he's a world-class player. You just need to get a tune out of him. And it looks like Mikel Arteta is starting to get that. He's got fantastic ability. If you play him in the right position, he'll cause all sorts of, all sorts of problems. Listen, he's not going to be the best at tracking back. We all understand that. But if you want him to create chances, he's probably one of the best there. But what I saw watching the game, obviously, the few games he's been in, the work rate's been brilliant. Even David Luiz, he's starting to defend now, working hard. And Aubameyang, who wants to play as a number nine, I know this as a striker. When you ask as a striker to go and play on the left side of a front three, you do not want to track back. Mm. You don't want to do it because you just want to stay up and score goals. I've done it in my career. I remember the manager saying to me, go and play there. I don't want to play there. I'm a number nine. But he does it at Aubameyang. This is a world-class striker who wants to score goals. One of the top goals. He is Arsenal's top goal scorer. And he was tracking back. So you can see... They he won't want to be doing that. He won't want to be... No, long. but he won't want to... But at the moment, they're buying into what Arteta. Because if you don't want to do yeah. it... Under, I know they started like this under Unai Emery, but I think Arteta is the right fit for them. And I think... But um, this is I a free hit. That, that was a big game, think, Man United, and he was tracking back but, and everything. All right, so Merce, do you not think this... See, it's a free hit for him, though. This, it doesn't matter what, what happens. I know they're nine points, oh, no, but yeah, yeah, Champions yeah. League, but it's a free hit well, for him. Well, that's what I think. I think he's got six months, and he'll look at all the players, and he'll be watching them in training, he'll be seeing who the eye maintenance players are, who the ones that he can work with, who the ones he can only have to tell once. So that's mm, important. Yeah. When you're telling players at this kind of level, you tell them once. If you have to start telling them two, three times, they ain't playing for Arsenal. Yeah. And I think that's what he'll, he'll be doing. Yeah, I, I, for me, I think the intensity is massive. Yeah, you yeah, know, when, yeah. when a manager comes in, the intensity is there. You know, everyone's at it. Everyone mm. should give you 10%. Everyone knows, you know, I've got to run around. I've got to get on it. Yeah. Ozil's working. Every, everyone's at it. What's going to happen is, is that you're going to see a few results. Mm. He's going to get them playing. And is, is now, can they keep that intensity going? You know, they looked flat in the first mm. half against Leeds. And he's obviously got into them at half-time. They've come out second half. And what he's going to do, he's going to have to keep doing that. Because what you get with big players on big contracts is you have an ego. You know, and if it, uh, does Aubameyang want to keep playing left-back? No, mm -hmm. yeah, he's not. You know, he wants to play centre forward. He did come out, didn't he? Because there was a little bit of um, discussion over whether or not he would stay at Arsenal. He has come out in the last couple of days and said that his future is committed there, and he wants to bring the good time, times back to Arsenal. And you think perhaps is this the right time for him to stay at the club like Arsenal or to try and get a move? Well, it's a difficult one. If Arsenal get into the Champions, he wants to play Champions League football. I think he's 31 years of age. Yeah. He's not getting. Arsenal, it, he's not getting any younger. But. You say that, Jim, but it's nine points. There's not, they're only nine points off it. They still got a chance. It's like no one wants to grab that full spider. I know Chelsea have done particularly well, but if they go on a little, I don't think they will. But if they go on a run, you just never know. They, they've got an outside chance mm. again because I don't think no one wants to grab it. But he wants to play Champions League football, and he deserves to play Champions League football because he scores goals and, he, and he's, he's got everything. He's got pace. He runs in behind. But the best thing he can do is when he's in front of that goal, you know he's going to score. But I don't know, Mas. What do you think? Uh. I, I, I seriously <laughs> don't know. <'cause laughs> that, 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 was, that was a big football match against Man United, and, and he was playing left back a lot of the time. He was tracking back. He was. He's a goal yeah, scorer. Good as Clinton says, he yeah. wants to play up front. That's like saying to Ian Wright, "Go and play on the left." And you know what? He They'll really play said. for one or two games, and then it'll be, and they'll be straight on the phone to the agent. It'll be going, "I ain't playing there anymore. I don't want to be playing there." But he won't kick up a stink. He's a professional, but. 
I, I think if they got 70 or 80 million pounds for it, I think they'd sell him. I do, he's 31. That's good yeah. money. I think that if they could get 60, 70 million, I think they would probably sell him and, and try and build. Well, he's a club... And that's not because he's not a good player, because mm. he's a good goal scorer. Club captain at the moment. Mm. Um, but Mikel Arteta hinted at the fact that it wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility that Granit Xhaka might be a future captain again. So that tells me he might be going then, Abamian. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that'd be a mistake, okay. you know, to Why? go back. I, I think, look, he, he had it, took off him. He had this whole situation with the fans. Got very toxic, didn't it, all of a sudden? And it mm. was, you know, loads of negativity around the football club. If you then go back to that, you know, you're not progressing. Yeah. They brought Arteta in to change it mm. and, and progress the football club. You know, he's he brought Xhaka back into the team. He's doing all right. You know, oh, let him just concentrate on his game yeah. and let him just play football. Don't heap more pressure on the lad. Was it a mistake to make him a, a captain in the first place? Um, well, yeah, I think it was. I mean, they, it, it was a, a player's vote, yeah. which for me was so complete weakness from the manager. You know, the manager picks the captain. Mm. You come in, that's your job. Pick your captain. The players don't pick who the captain is. You know, that's so... It was a big mistake, you know, for me. It was, should never got to that stage. It turned very sour, very quickly. He turned on the fans, the fans turned on him. So you can't go back. Yeah, but a fair play to him. Showed a lot of character, yeah. you know, because his career was finished at Arsenal. And to have to walk back on that mm. picture... And, and to put in the performances he has, he's, he's been yeah, good he's since right. he's come back. So, you know, fair play to him. I have a lot of respect for but, him. You know, I wasn't his biggest fan. And, you know, but since he's come back, he's, he's played well and... He could have easy gone, you know what, I, I, I'll move yeah. on now. Yeah. And he has. He's gone, yeah, pick me and I'll play. And, and fair play to him. Fair play. And they, they need him. Mm. But they would, need you him, him would, you, would you give him the captain's armband <laughs> again, though? After what happened when the first time he had it? No, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I think he's just saying that he's, he's a part of my plans. Yeah. I, think, I think he's a part of his plans now. I think he looked at his midfield... And there's not too much in that midfield, and I think he's one of the main ones. Well, if there's not too much in the midfield, there's even less when you look a little bit further back and talk about the centre-back position. Uh, Callum Chambers is out now. Looks like it might be up to nine months. Wow. Um, if they dip into the market, there's been suggestions that they need a centre-back. That's actually been a suggestion for a long time, really. Um, the name that's coming up at the moment is Jerome Boateng. Would he be a good fit, do you think? Yeah. I mean, look, he's international level. He's playing for a fantastic club in Bayern Munich. He's been there, done it. He's won things. Uh, and I think, was he 31? Mm. So he's still got legs in him. You know, he, they signed David Luiz and he was a little bit older mm. and he's a bit of a mismatch. You know, sometimes he's great, sometimes he's not. I think Jerome Boateng will give you a bit more sort of consistency and he's a leader. He's a leader on the football pitch. The players are going to respect him. As soon as he comes through that dressing room, everyone's going to know who he is. And I think that's key with Arsenal. So, if look, I think they need to address that situation still because, you know, they can be at sixes and sevens at the back and bringing in someone like him will definitely help. And he's played in the Premier League before for Man City. He's at that yeah, age where he's think, been yeah. a German international. You don't seem convinced, but but you, I, know yeah, what, I, I, I think, I think Arsenal. I think Arsenal are getting a little bit carried away here. I think you know he's played at Bayern Munich where they're getting eighty percent of the ball. They probably got two games a season. This Arsenal team's not a 70-30 position team anymore. It's not a team that are dictating games. I see Brighton go there the other week and and have main and, and come away and should have won. Mm. They need defenders now. People who can defend. They should be starting looking at the lads at Brighton. Yeah, they should be starting looking at them players. Lewis you know, Dunk. who are going to defend. When the ball comes in, they head it out. They kick it out. They put it in the I, stand. They don't want the... I don't... The, the players at Arsenal now have gone where they're getting on the ball and they're looking up and they're passing when out. You're still they, Arsenal still try yeah, to play like that, man. But they, they need the defenders. Way, but they, oh, yeah, OK. Well, so you're talking about players I'm within the Premier eight, League yeah. that could make a good move. Oh. They've played in the Premier League already. They could make a step up to an Arsenal side. Or not necessarily oh, I, used to, I used to think years ago, I used to, about four or five years ago, I used to think if there was a, a real good defender at Wolves or Brighton yeah. or places like that, I used to think... Oh, no, I'm not sure about that. You know, Arsenal don't play on the edge of the box. They play on the halfway line. Not no more. Arsenal don't play on the halfway line anymore. It's very rare you see Arsenal that high. They're, they're very, they play quite deep now. So, I, I, 31... I, when you're 31, you get 32, you get 33. I give you one assurance. You ain't getting quicker. <laughs> and this league is relentless and it's ruthless and it's not the Bundesliga <laughs> and it's not playing for Bayern Munich. This is playing for Arsenal and you'll be defending a lot Look, more yeah, yeah, so right. than me. Yeah. yeah, but let's be honest, Merce. Are Arsenal going to go out and spend 60... Have they got 60 million to go and sign a 25-year-old uh, centre-half that can come straight into that team who you mm. probably have question marks over, say, say, a Lewis Dunk? 
He's I fantastic. Said, you know who point. I said at the start of the season who they should have signed? He's had a great season at Crystal Palace. You should have gone and signed Cahill. If you're going to sign yeah. Boltang, you can talk about Cahill. He's Cahill. brilliant. He's in great shape. And you could have gone and signed him experience yeah. and he would have been a yeah. hell of a signing not, for yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. But there's I'm glad a, Palace have got him. There's yeah. been a lot of names that yeah. have come up as potential. I mean, Nathan Aki is one, obviously, is injured at the moment, but he's another one that's shining. But I, think, but look, I think Chelsea have got the buyback Chelsea thing got a buyback of 40 million. On and, I, and, 40 is not, and, I can, and 40 is a, a slip in this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And he is a really good defender. So All I right. can see that one maybe happening. Yeah. Well, there is a question that's come in, and it's a uh, trophy or top four for Arsenal. Do we think that they will get either of those? this season, so I'll just ask you all. Maz, do you think a trophy or a top four position? <laughs> I think they've got a chance of a trophy. Yeah, in they're four. in the FA Cup, they're in the Europa. Yeah, mm -hmm. why not? Definitely. Yeah, i say trophy. Trophy? Uh, yeah, they've got a good chance of a trophy, FA Cup. They've got more chance of a trophy yeah. and top and four, aren't they? Yeah. Nine points off, aren't they? Yeah, I'll, I'll say Tottenham will, will, will more than likely get a trophy ahead of Arsenal. I would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he knew that was coming out of his face. <laughs> Mercer no. doesn't agree with you. But he no, never really does. Yeah, though, he never does. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I do. Right, well. <laughs> <laughs> Not there, though. I think, I think it's amazing that we're talking about them needing a centre back and they haven't signed anyone yet, but you still think they, that they might get a trophy. But do you think if the situation stays as it is, they, they won't? Uh, on their day, Arsenal will beat anybody yeah. on their yeah. day. Over, over 38 games, they're not consistent enough. But you've seen Arsenal over the last five, six, seven years, even when at the end of Wenger, yeah. got in final after final. Because on their day, they can beat anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But they can't put them back to back. They can't win Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. Yeah. And that's the problem.